Welcome one, welcome all one more time here on your favorite show at Sankofa Galaxy Universal Networks in Johannesburg, South Africa. Your host, Maponga J. What are we talking about today? Land, property, wealth creation, research, research, research. Know your business. And with me in studio today, none other than Kakeho. Kakeho, a young and upcoming businesswoman in South Africa who is actively involved in the property business. We want to know all the ins and outs of the property business and how best Many of our young kids and boys and girls out there are looking for professions. They go to university, graduate, and sit on the side of the street holding posters, looking for employment. How do you convert your career, your profession, into your wealth? How do you convert your contacts? You look at my phone book right now here. I'm more than 6,000, 6,000 contacts. The question is, do I deserve the 6,000 contacts, or I would rather have 10 contacts whom I can convert into contracts? So all of us as black people who are doing business with Europeans, with Asians, with Chinese, and with Indians, when are we going to start doing business with each other? So today, I want us to zoom into the property business. And you remember one of my famous statements, of course, that every man must have two wives. Two wives, yeah. Polygamy is allowed in Africa as long as you remember the first wife is land, and then the second wife is the one who makes children for you. So before you can make my daughter pregnant, you better make sure, you better make sure that you make the land pregnant. Because the first wife will always be in the business of looking after the second wife. All other government policies we're talking about, Minister of this, Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Transport, Minister of Rural Development, Minister, all those ministries are useless. There's only one ministry that is important. That's the Ministry of Land. Because land is our only resource. From land, we make our roads. From land, we make our houses. From land, we have our resources. From land is our agriculture. From la without land, we have nothing. We went to fight in these African wars, not to fight for democracy. We went to fight for land. And by the way, remember, without property, you don't have sureties. The bank policy is founded on the principle, do you have a backbone from which you want to get the loan from? And that backbone must be irremovable property. Therefore, land and property remains the bedrock of the economic structures that we are working with. If you don't have land, you don't have access to loans, access to resources. Unfortunately, the same colonial system has made it a point that black land is cheaper, white land is more expensive. But land is land. Whether it is in Kahiso, or it is in Fandaber Park, or it is in Senten. But no, they demarcate and put a fence around and say, this land is more expensive than that land. But look at it more closely. Land is land. All it takes is correct development in each piece of this land that increases the value of that land or decreases the value of that land. I want to find out from Katleko today, and I might, if I get tempted and I start swinging into my political space, okay. please uh, hold me. Please greet the viewers out there and tell them who are you, where are you, why are you, and uh, what do you do, who do, do, who do you do, and why do you do? <laughs> Which one should I start with? You start from the beginning, go slowly, <laughs> and reach the end, stop. <laughs> Okay, so my name is Katlaho. Thank you so much for everyone who is watching, who is tuning in. I'm looking forward to... You're right in that camera or you're right into my eyes. One of those two. But you are safer here. I'm safer. No, I think I'm safer. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so my name is Katlaho and I am from the East Rand, from a family of four. And I'm the firstborn and I am a firm believer of God. I grew up in a godly household and I am in the property business. I'm in the property business. Um, how I started in, in the property business is I was looking for employment and I could not find a job. And I was frustrated and I was sulking, but I made a decision to tap out of my emotions, to tap out of, of sulking and actually motivate myself and drive myself to look for other opportunities. So what I did was that when I tapped out of my emotions and my pity party for myself, I thought to myself, what can I do? Started looking for more jobs, no opportunity. I thought to myself, how can I start a business? There's nothing I can do. Then I thought of property. Property, how about property? Let's do property. Property is an ongoing need. We always, we will always need property. It does not matter how the economy is. We will always 
need we property. all go home to sleep we all go home to every sleep every evening every we all evening. need the premises exactly from where we can operate exactly from. we all need a piece of land where we can yes. plant the food which we are eating so whether it's commercial whether it's residential we all need property so i thought to myself why not do property then i ventured into property and step by step i i worked hard how long now in this place i've been in this space this is my third year now third year yeah, this is my you're third about year. to get your degree if it was at university i'll say you're in your final year <laughs> actually uh, i'm in my final year yeah. to being the woman that i really see myself becoming in the long run as long as i really mean i'm in the consistency, mm. the hard work. You've paid your school um, fees. Yeah. Actually, yes. Yeah, I've, paid yeah, no, no. I've paid my school fees, like you're saying. Uh -huh. And I am just in, in a phase of my life where I see myself becoming that property woman that I see myself um, empowering and grooming other young people of my likes to say, you know what? get out of the pity party get out of feeling sorry for yourself whatever you have your skill use that to the best of your ability think of it what can i do i'm a singer what can i do with my with my skill talent, you know yeah. with my talent so get out of the pity party so i want to to get myself to a point where people look at me and not just oh wow we admire you so much but no actually if katleho could do it i can also do it colonially colonial academic wise yes. how far did you go um so i did my Beacon Marketing uh, with MGI uh, from Beacon Marketing. I did a short course in UNISA from short course in UNISA. I joined the Laura Institute mm -hmm. and I did a program in entrepreneurship and mm -hmm. I did a program in leadership as mm -hmm. well. So leadership was my last year. Last year? Mm -hmm. That's the, that was my last year. Mm -hmm. And I completed that. If you were supposed to advise a young person out there yeah. who wants to move into the property business, yes. maybe they're in high school. Yes. They have not yet gone through the mill. Yes. What kind of subjects will you be advising them to say if you want to end up in the property space? Yes. These are the critical courses. This is the critical preparation that you need to get yourself entrenched into to drive towards where you are or what you are aspiring to become. Okay, so with, with property, um, and it's interesting to, to actually realize that I did not fixate my mind to say this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. But because circumstances did not allow me to do what I was passionate about at the time, I, looked, mm -hmm. I had to look for other um, opportunities. Mm -hmm. So to everyone that actually wants to pursue property, sit down and ask yourself, is this what I really want? Mm -hmm. Because beyond making profits, beyond making money, you need consistency, you mm. need patience, and, you need to be willing to work hard. Yes, you need to be willing to work hard. You need to be able to re to accept rejection, but not allowing the rejection to, to keep you in that space. Mm. You know, so if you really want to, to venture into property, do your research, because everyone will tell you different things. But at the end of the day, it's, it's what it's, it's what's inside of you that will drive you to actually pursue um, the property industry. So if you want to do property, I would advise um, for you to actually go deeper into economics, for you to go deeper into communication skills. You need to communicate. So we're having with communication your, skills? Yes. We're having economics? Yes. And? You have economics, you have your... Um, Marketing? Communication, communication, yes, marketing, yeah. yes. You mm -hmm. need to be able to interact with, you need to know your numbers as well. Mm -hmm. So I think you would, I would advise for you to do your accounting subjects, mm -hmm. your um, statistics um, mm -hmm. subjects, but more than anything, do short programs. Do they short go program. a long way. A that long six way. months, the, the, that you are now dealing it. with yes. the practical side yes. of the career. Yes, yeah. so, so do your short programs. If there is a program is in sale, do it. If there's a program in accounting, do it. If there's a program in entrepreneurship like I did, do it. Someone is sitting in Bujumbura, yeah. someone is sitting in Lagos, someone is sitting in Nairobi right now. The whole of Africa is watching yes. you. We are in more than 42 African countries yeah. with more than 65 million people mm. who are watching you. And someone wants to come to South Africa and they want a house, they want a property. What would you be telling them? What must they do if they want to own property in South Africa? If you want to own property in South Africa, you need to have a deposit of at least 40% or 50%. And of the value of the property. Of the value of the property as your deposit. Mm -hmm. And how, what I'd advise is for the person to find land. Mm -hmm. Find a piece of land, get someone to help you um, get a piece of land. I can also assist with that. Mm -hmm. And two most important things when you are looking for land is the pricing 
is the location mm -hmm. because some actually some lands are, are way overpriced mm -hmm. and you'd be thinking that you're actually making an investment whereas you're actually not because the value of the land is not equivalent to what you are investing mm -hmm. so I would advise that you pay careful attention to location mm -hmm. you pay careful attention to to the pricing and most importantly what do I want to do with the land? Mm -hmm. Do I want to build on the land? Do I want to, to yield return on investment mm -hmm. in property? Or do I want to build residential where my family can actually come to South Africa? What are the financial there? obligations for people to access funding into owning land? Okay, so with, with financial implications... Because I'm, or someone comes to you and they, want, yeah, they, sure. they, they, they say, I'm interested in the land. Yes. Then they must go through the process of going to the banks yes. and getting loans yes. and getting approvals yes. and getting sureties yes. and, 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 and 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 of the 10 people that come maybe two fall through the other six get stuck the other two are pending so the closing rate doesn't mean that everyone walks up to you and says i want land yeah. you have 100 percent return i want to find out what are those glitches that are found in the pipeline when people are trying to access land the biggest glitch one can find is financial from financial assistance from the banks because banks are very reluctant to to give out loans with regards to land mm. because of the risk that there is with land yes there are risks but there are more um, advantages for you and i always advise people that want to venture into into land development into actually purchasing that financial implications of it mm. to say relax get as much capital as you can mm -hmm. and try by all means if you can mm -hmm. to go cash mm -hmm. but if you can't have at least 60 percent of it mm -hmm. because banks only loan 60 percent of um of your investment, of your investment. Mm -hmm. yeah but, but why i'm saying that yeah i'll do a bit of politics if you see a young boy there mr van der Merve's son yes or mr peter says son yes or Mr. Johannes' son, yes, who has got his father's insurance policy, yes, and life cover, okay, and and and. When he walks up to the bank and says he's looking for a loan, and that he, while he's when he receives the loan and he's knocked by a car outside, mm. the bank can actually have a follow-up program mm. to how do they recover their money. Because this person is insurable. Yes. They already have a couple of insurance policies yes. that are in their background. Yes. But hell no. Hell no for Tulani, who is coming from a Mukuku, who neither has a funeral cover yeah. or an insurance policy, or the fathers or parents have left nothing with him or for him in his hand. Mm -hmm. The bank walks up and gives him a million dollars. And the boy is knocked up by a car outside. That money is lost and it is sure. forfeited. So sure. the, the whole concept yeah. of us as Africans beginning to understand yes. the value of small little initiatives hmm. such as funeral covers, yes. insurance policies, life covers, both short term and long term investments. Over and above that, consolidating family estates. There are no Africans that are poor. Why do I say that? from your maternal side, from your paternal side, if wheels were put into place, for example, clearly stipulating what are the shareholding structures in those wheels. Yeah. Some of our grandfathers have three, five, six kilometers worth of land as estate. Yeah. It could be in the most rural area. But guess what? The other day, a guy calls me from Beggarsford and gold mine has been found on his grandfather's estate. Now, here you are sitting in town thinking that there's money in Senton. But your grandfather, yeah. who hardly has anything, now there is a mine on the thing. The other guy actually called me from uh, Bethel. Coal was found on their grandfather's farm. So these useless pieces of land, because there's no exhaustive and extensive exploration that has been done on the land, you may think that the land is useless. Yes. Meanwhile, you are saying it's useless based on what is on top of the you land. See. Yes. Should you look what is at the bottom of the land, you could actually have value. All of a sudden, a boy yeah. who lives in a shack in, 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 in Alex wakes up to discover his grandfather is sitting on an estate 
which has a coal mine, and the coal mine is valued at 2.3 billion. Now imagine the thinking, because I want to, I want to sure. assist Africans yeah. throughout sure. Africa sure. who are running from rural areas into urban space. And when they're in urban spaces, Spaces, they're looking for yeah. estate. Mm -hmm. And when they're looking for estate, they're looking for rentals, they're looking for buying properties. They get to the bank, the bank wants surety. And the yeah. surety that they want is the same thing that we have left at the back. How do you begin to help the African actually to understand that land is land? <laughs> sure. I gave you two examples, just to give you a jump start. That's heavy example, so I'm actually taking it. Take your time, take your time. Okay, I, can, I, could sit, I could sit my coffee <laughs> while I'm waiting for you. <laughs> well, um, I've always advised people to stop going for, for status. People go to your suburb areas because of the status. Mm. I, live in, <laughs> I live in four ways, oh. I live in Santon, uh -huh. you know. Um, I'm from Bryanston, mm. you know, so people run but for the status. But you didn't say Bryanston. No, it's Bryanston. With an accent. There's a, there's a tongue to it, yeah, there's a tongue a to twang, it. Yeah. There's a twang, There's a twang in Bryanston, yeah. you know. Yeah. So people go to Bryanston mm. and, and they rush for that. And yes, I bought property, I have properties. No, mm. you don't have properties because what you spent on the property will not yield you any results. Mm. By the time you want to sell, you've made a loss. Mm. Because what you want from the property, you will never get it. It's a buyer's market. Mm. Everyone is buying property. The economy allows people to buy property right now. The interest rate has remained at 6%. Who would not want to invest in property right now? Mm. So the recession is actually given is a plus right now. It's a plus right now. Because uh, the, 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 the property market is, is actually uh, the development uh, indexes are a bit low. Sure. And so if you have some resources, it is a good time to buy. It is a great time to buy. If great you remember correctly, buy. 2008, 2009, we, had, we, we went through the same you know, thing, mm. but except for COVID, except that. But we went through the whole same recession, the economy being at, you know, it's, at its, its lowest. But people went gunning for properties. People mm. invested in properties. So this is a perfect time to buy, but it goes back to pricing, and goes back to location. 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 Yeah. So it's the prime time to buy if you're listening yeah. to the program, wherever you are right now. If you got some money that is stitched somewhere, uh, I would say gold shares are doing very fine. Property is even better. But me as an African indigenous leader, of course, I would even suggest this is good time to go back to the village again, hmm. get a piece of land, put a few chickens there, put a few goats there, and by the way, put a few cows there in less than five to six years. If you can invest in less than six or seven cows, pull that money away from the bank. It does not grow. If you buy a cow, a cow gives birth to another calf. And when I started off with nine, I have more wow. than 78 cows now in less than six years. I like, saw one of them running. <laughs> More than 78 cows right True. now. So it's like, it's like, like just double, tripled, and etc. So if you have money that is sitting around somewhere yeah. else, hey, money does not grow. Don't take it and put it in the ground thinking it will germinate. Take your money, invest it in property, invest it in agriculture, and see how best you can actually begin to work around this recession story. Downscale your car. You're no longer going to work now. There's no way to go, no functions. You cannot show off your car. Throw away that car. Downscale. Get a smaller car. Take the money and invest it in property, in land, and in animal husband. When you come back after the break, let's find out from Katleho here. How best can we run this property business? What are the ins and outs of the property business? How much research must one do before they can get involved in the property business? We'll be back right after the break. Man's face. He killed your brother. No, please. 
Make messy moves with Stars Head. Make massive moves. So from the theater stage to the kitchen. I'm anxiously awaiting to see Sanaya. Voila. What else is this if not love? Make massive moves with Stars Head. Maponga J, welcome back here on your program, Sankofa. We are in Africa, and if Africa is not a name, Africa is a piece of land with a genuine GPRS, the ground on which we are living in. And some people, of course, have started selling land. I've always had a problem with people who are selling land because no one has ever received a receipt from God for the first sale. So who sells land except they are thieves of colonial, colonial capitalism? You say, now I own this place, I own this place. Backed up by legislation, they start selling land. But honestly, as Africans, we don't own land. Our land owns us. From it we came, to it we shall return. Let's hear from Katleko. How do we begin to develop a career in land and property business? What does your day look like? What are the critical issues? What are the importance of research? Introduce us to the property business in its totality so that even if someone is sitting out there and they are thinking about land i saw a very funny advert there that yeah. yesterday this young guy walks up to someone and says I'm, I'm i'm a property business property business uh agent chef and she this woman calls says i'm looking for agent chef speaking come please i got a property i look for three bedroom house the woman comes and says okay i have the property for you but before i take you to the property you must pay me a deposit and the person must okay. pay a deposit the Nigerian little clips. You know, okay. The woman pays a deposit. How much is it? 130,000 naira. La, 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 la. So come and meet me tomorrow. I'll show you the property. Then he runs immediately after that to the owner of the house and says, I have a client coming. Clear everything <laughs> out. When the client comes, they must see, find the house empty. And they'll show them the house. The woman comes for sure, looks at the house. I like the house. Pay me the balance. The woman pays the balance. Says, I'm coming into the house tomorrow. And when she leaves, the owner of the house comes. And this one whispers, 10% of the deal is yours. So when the client comes in the following morning now with her bags, this one says, no, who are you? <laughs> who are you? This is my house. This is my house. Of course, it ends up in a bad thing. Because yeah, while, while she's, this is my house, the woman picks her bags and goes and hides somewhere else. Then uh, Chef Agent <laughs> walks back in, and this woman comes in with guns and says, please, may I have my money? It ends up in an ugly environment. But take us through some of the, even some of the scandals yeah. that are happening in property businesses where people are selling properties that don't belong to them, and they play hide and seek and etc. So please, take us through the entire ins and out of the property business. I'll start with, with what you just highlighted now, the joke, mm -hmm. um, that the gentleman paid the deposit into the agent's account mm. you don't do that mm. you can never pay direct money to an agent mm -hmm. that's why we have um, transfer attorneys mm. but fortunately with um, with land develop with land purchasing you don't have much transfer costs to pay that actually happens in your property process so first things first i've seen so many victims um, where they've actually paid their monies into agents' accounts, with a rental, with a property. And so first rule, you, you don't pay you don't, money into an agent account. You don't do that. You don't deal with an agent. An agent is an agent. An agent is an agent. Transactions, transfer, transfer attorneys. attorneys. Did you go. hear that, guys? If you're buying a property anywhere else, <laughs> get the middleman out of the road. The middleman will get paid by 